Hey, it's five o'clock. It's time for Watch Me Work. I'm SLP. We are doing it again because that's what we do. Um, we're doing Watch Me Work. We've been doing this show for like, I don't know, someone good in math. It's since like 2009 or 2010. We started in the lobby of the public theater where I sat down and just started asking people, how you doing? Like, a little weird. You know, how is your work going? And the show um, basically grew out of that. When COVID hit and the lockdown hit, we went on Zoom, helped by Hal Round, who was helping us before, of course. Um, and they helped, they expanded. New Work Development Department has embraced us. And here we are. So um, we've got Amritha, we've got Zoe, we've got Haley's Comet, and uh, all helping out. And we've got the folks from Hal Round. Anything. So, so what we do, we do it the same thing every time we meet. We work for 20 minutes together, and then I take your questions about your work and your creative process. While we don't have time to share work specifically, we do have plenty of time to talk about process. And if you have a question about your process, Zoe will tell you how to get in touch. Or Amritha, you want to say anything before Zoe? I will just very quickly say hello, everyone. I'm so grateful that New Work Development is supporting Watch Me Work with SLP. Great to see you all. Welcome, welcome. And then I'm going to hand it over to Zoe and Haley to talk more about how Watch Me Work works. Hi, everyone. I'm Zoe. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I'm the New Work Development Manager. Happy to see everyone. Um, per what's already been said, we're going to work for 20 minutes. And once we are opening up for questions, um, please go ahead and use the raise your hand function and we'll make a queue of questions. And then I'll, I'll, I'll ask for you to unmute and ask your question. So that's how we're going to um, have a nice little queue of questions. Great. And I'm doing something that I never do, but I always believe in trying new things. I have started a uh, test kitchen which is another way of saying I've started up a band and we have some gigs. I'm trying out new songs, working on a new show. If you want to come to one of the gigs, uh, the link to the website is in the chat. You can sign up for our, our mailing list and we'd love to see you there. So uh, there's that. And uh, okay, so here we go. 20 minutes.
Yay. Okay. So, so um, if you have questions about your work, your creative process, you want to talk about how you're doing, whatever, we are here. Happy to see you. Welcome in the people who haven't been here before, if there are any. Welcoming back the people who have been here before. Yes, if you have questions, please go ahead and use your raise the hand function and we'll go ahead and call your, your call on your name to unmute. Mary, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, I don't know what this means, but my Mount Holyoke College pen ran out while I was doing my work. I'm also a Mount Holyoke alum. I think the ghost of Mary Lyon was trying to speak to us. Yes, everybody um, thinks she's fellow, as they call them now, mohos. Mohos, we have yes. Moho, fellow moho graduate of Mount Holyoke College. What do you think? Um, what is your process when you are working on something? Like how much of your day do you give to writing and still have time to do other things like laundry and taking care of your family and then time for yourself? That's great. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a so our the way we slice our days, you know, the sandwich that we make uh, with our days. It's 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 a it's an ever changing sandwich, and we should all do what works best for us. So, I mean, I was watching some um, wonderful, you know, one of those American Master shows, or well, maybe it wasn't that. It was some great show about some great writer who happened to be called Ernest Hemingway, and. Um, you know, Mr. Hemingway, apparently when he was living in Key West would in the morning, you know, from whatever time to whatever time he would be up in his upstairs study and the children would know that dad was up there, but they couldn't bother him, you know, and then he'd come downstairs after lunch and he'd go fishing on a boat, you know, and I'm like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> So, at, at, yeah, um, you know, my son walks in my office at right after he gets up and that's how the day starts. But what's so any anything works, basically, whatever works for you is what's going to work. Uh, my son comes in my office um, at six o'clock in the morning and he reads aloud because I like to hear him read. He needs to read. But I have did it. Did it I have these wonderful things. Earplugs. And I put them in my ears and he's, uh, you know, a foot away from me reading out loud and I'm writing. So whatever works. And I, uh, sometimes it's three hours, sometimes it's 20 minutes. Um, whatever we I would say, try to do something every day. Do something every day. I mean, right. You know, and do something and maybe you have lots of some things, you know, uh, maybe you have to practice an instrument and that's, you can do that for 20 minutes and then, you can write for an hour or, or you have a subway ride to your day job and you can write longhand in your notebook on the subway. Just put in the time, find a way to put the time in. Does that help, Mary? I mean. Yes, I'm in the middle of my master's thesis and I'm writing an original play. And I'm just <laughs> trying to figure out, like, do I, do, you know, do I do a chunk on Monday and then take Tuesday off? But I, I like the idea of a little bit each day and just kind of chip away at it. Yeah, yeah. And I think also my what might help is choosing your favorite time of the day. Like, what is your favorite work time of the day? Is it morning? Or are you an afternoon person, a night owl? What do you think? But definitely not a night owl. I'm going to I'm going to go with morning. I usually start teaching in the afternoon. So I have this like chunk of time in the beginning of the day. So take take some of that, at least some of it, you know, every day, even if you only have an hour, you know, before you have to prep for class or, you know, your other responsibilities. Um, yeah, I, I would say meet it every day. Show up because you're like, you're sort of, uh, you're, you're making yourself discoverable, if you will. You know what I mean? And the muses have to know that you're you're there and you're discoverable. And I'd like to make myself discoverable every single day. Once I did one of these with you a couple of years ago and you told me about index cards and yeah. I, I stole that from you and I love it. And my husband to this day is like, why are all these index cards around? 
are these important? I was like, yes, it's just my thesis and index cards, but. That's great. And you can carry them in your pocket, yep. right? And are those colorful index cards? Are those, yep. are those a fun? Yep. So for the, the actual pay, for the play, it's this for, I'm writing study guides for secondary school educators. They're a different color. There you go. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we want to make it fun. You know, I was saying, how do you, how do you game the system or how do you game your system into, I want to engage in that. You know what I mean? Uh, Cause if it feels too much like work, sometimes it's, eh, but it's, it's actually, you're going to game your own system into, into playing. I like what you, know? you said about the muses. You have to remind them daily that you are there. So thank you. I yeah. greatly Take your advice. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. And yay, Mount Holyoke. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Charlie, please go ahead and unmute yourself to ask your question. Thank you. Hey, Charlie. Hey, SLP. Um, I'm in this really nice place right now, my co-writer and I are just, we're probably like one session away from finishing a first crap draft of something. We've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, and, but, but I, I, and then we'll take a little break and then come back and see, but try to better see what we have, but we haven't, you know, we haven't been trying to be too objective or whatever. We're just like flying with it, feeding off each other. It's been fun. Uh, but that was floating around up here. Any thoughts about like, without ruining all the fun, but still getting mm -hmm. back and trying to see this mm -hmm. a little more objectively. Any thoughts about how to get down without going too low and getting all pissy about what we did? Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> so how long are you gonna take as a pause between um, finishing? No more than a week, maybe less. Great, Yeah. great, sure. great. Okay, um, so you, you, neither of you are gonna read it at all? I don't know. We haven't decided. Yeah, I, I, I'd be, have a hard. I mean, if that was the right thing to do, we would. I, I probably will take it out and read it through once before we get back together. Just, okay. Are you going to curious? So what, sure, sure. So, are you going to read it like um, sitting down or standing yeah. up or what? Probably sitting down in a comfortable chair. Okay. 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 I mean, if you um, say I should like be doing wind sprints or something, I'd listen to that. But <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. I, I want it. I want it to be pleasant for you. How about um, you can? I mean, do something silly. I'm just making this up. Let's see if it makes any sense. You can, uh, yes, do like uh, say every five minutes. You can set your timer. Every five minutes you're reading, the timer goes off, and you have to compliment yourself. Oh my God, that was such a plot. Oh wow, good job, man. Good job, like that. You just, just try that. It could be, it could be, it could. It's making you laugh now. Well, you could, it could it's be also fun. assuming that I'm gonna be. I mean, I might start reading it and still really enjoy it, which would be. There great. you go. I, I don't great. know that I'm gonna overshoot, but just like, but I also, I also want to like get out of my own head a, a little bit. Well, then, then, then we go into the wind sprints. So then, get up out of the chair. And read it aloud. Uh, you know what I mean? That's yeah. that you get it. Out, you want to get out of your head, then you got to get it off your butt. And excuse my language, but you got to, I mean, standing up, reading it aloud, you know, and, and I would still suggest some kind of reminder in there to compliment yourself every once in a while. Cause this isn't like saying that you're not going to like it. This is saying, get out of your head and put the responsibility of complimenting yourself on something else. So this is taking it off, off your plate, if ah, you will. Yeah. You're putting it on the plate of, of the timer, letting the timer take the responsibility of reminding you. You know? I like that. So even if you're in, enjoying a scene, whatever, bing, 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 oh my gosh, this is such a great scene. Great. Go back to it. You know what I mean? It it um it helps you get out of your yourself. And then when you read it with your friend, when you get back together. I don't know what you, if you like to drink wine, you might involve wine. You know, 
if you if you like that if you don't then please don't you don't start drinking uh because i suggested so but if you if you're someone who enjoys a glass of wine you might want to share a glass of wine with your friend you might even want to open a bottle of champagne and celebrate make it a party thank you i will try some of that hopefully it'll, 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 it'll help you're us welcome. keep moving yeah Congratulations. Well, we're not there yet. Not there yet. Yeah, but I'm congratulating you anyway, because you're going to be there. Thank Congratulations. you. Chris, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Hey. Hi, Chris. How's it going? It's going well. I love your guitar in the background, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you um, know. Thank you for this and for making this time and for everyone who's involved in running the show. Um, it's been really great. This is my first time here. Um, so thank you for having me. I'm in a place right now with, with this play that I've been working on. It's like my family play uh, mm -hmm. that is kind of something I've been working on for a long time. And I feel mm -hmm. like I put all these dominoes just like in this perfect order and then I realized I hated it and I blew it up and then I mm. put them all back. And so now I've got this first act, which is, I feel like this domino goes into that domino. And so there's this very, um, what feels like just structurally coherent thing. But now mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's, if I'm starting to feel like a little bit like overwhelmed by putting those dominoes in place and the crafty, like kind of game of it and i'm like craving the a burst of lightning or something that's less um like i feel like i'm trying to do a trick like i'm trying to mm -hmm. i'm trying to trick it i'm trying to be like oh well if i follow all these rules then it'll be amazing and it's like i've got this first act and i and i like it but to proceed i don't know whether or not i should continue along this path of like very diligently trying to like set up the action in a very rulesy rulesy way or mm -hmm. just be like let me just write the dream whatever flash happens i feel like that's kind of scary to me um mm -hmm. but i also feel like it's what i need to do and i guess i'm just like wondering i guess to put it in the form of a question it's like when you've got something that you feel like is sort of technically working how do you move mm -hmm. forward when you feel like there's other things that need to happen <laughs> for it to uh -huh. progress. Uh -huh. No, that's a really great question, Chris. Are they your rules or are they rules from like an outside source? Like, you know, Joe Smith's rules of playwriting. Are they someone else's rules? Yeah, there's someone should... else's rules that worked for me in getting me here like but I haven't, that's a really good question. They're definitely someone else's rules. Okay. 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 So that, that, cause that, cause a lot of times when we make up our own rules and our own systems, we're less resistant to them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so part of your resistance might just be that there's someone else's rules that, that have worked for you in the past and you're wondering, will they work again? Is that what you're. Yeah. That's like the trick thing where I'm like, I want to repeat the, the magic thing that happened right 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 right. hmm well i mean you can you can do both you know you can follow the rules the dominoes the things you've set up mm -hmm. and write the second act mm -hmm. and then if you're not happy with it you could rewrite it in another way yeah you know because uh, i wouldn't i mean there's nothing wrong with following sort of this these rules, you know. You know what I mean? It's, you know, like in screen screenplay writers are are more attentive to those kinds of things. And on page one, it has to be this. On page three, it has to be this. Those kinds of things. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just um, you want you don't want it to feel mechanical or you know arch. So write, go ahead and write it, and that's what the rewrite might be for. You know? Yeah, I think the you other. Know? I think the other thing about like when I just kind of let go of the mechanical way is that I feel like my play starts to like 
become about everything. <laughs> it becomes a magnet for like any idea that crosses my mind immediately. Mm. It's like, well, that's going in, that's it. And then all of a sudden it's nothing because it's everything. And so I like always, I'm like, tie me down to something. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. So, I mean, that's a great, that's, it's just a great observation about yourself and your process. I would say for, you know, I mean, how many pages is your second act going to be? Uh, I want it to be 70 pages. For the second act? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So you write those 70 pages mm -hmm. and then you see what you think about it. You know, and if it's like, well, if it's working, then you don't have to blow it up and do so. You know, if it's working, it's it's working. That's great. Um, if it's feels kind of false or fake or stiff or whatever your your judgment is of your work, then you can go in there and you know turn over the soil a little bit and and write another draft. You know, totally. But but you're in the you're in the middle, and in the middle is where you have to really stick to it. You know, uh, what do they say in the Scottish play, screw your courage to the sticking post. Something like <laughs> I that. like that. Uh, Amrita, did I get it right? Did I Am I quoting my Shakespeare? I, very close. I think it's sticking place or post, one of the two, but sticking definitely got it. <laughs> yeah. I, will, just, I will do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yes, yeah, you know, stick with it, bro. bro. <laughs> That's how we say it. Stick with it, bro. That's what we talk I will. About. And shout out my Holyoke because I'm from Northampton, Massachusetts, so in Smith College. That's where I grew up on Smith College campus. So shout out Western Mass Colleges. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. Uh oh, we're yeah. taking over. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Who is going to be next? Next. Mm. next. Let's just do random quotes of Shakespeare. No. Oh, Nisha. No, no, it's okay. Nisha saved us. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Nisha? Apologies. Uh, I think I'm unmuted, am I? You are mm -hmm. unmuted. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. So my, um, hello all people. My question is, I, I think I have two, but I'm trying to figure out how to make them short. So the first one is I'm always told you should turn these short plays into full length plays, but I don't know why I always have a reservation about doing that. So hmm. I'll write a play and I'll stop at about 20 pages, 10 mm -hmm. to 20. And then I say, okay, this is enough. If I push it, it won't have the same effect. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I think maybe it's me having too much respect for the craft that I don't think I'm good enough to do that. So I'm trying to figure out a good resolution. Hmm. Hmm. I appreciate uh, and admire you tremendously for like saying, hey, this is how long it should be. Sam Shepard, the great playwright, Sam Shepard, who passed away uh, not too long ago, had a wonderful essay called um, Time, in which he talks about how, to paraphrase horrifically, a play should be just as long as it is. You know what I mean? Because he would write plays of all sorts of lengths. And uh, he was really feeling like, you know, sometimes play should only be 10 minutes. Carol Churchill has a great play called Far Away. Is that what it's called? Someone's it in is. Louisiana. Far I just, Away. I just read that. It is. I just read that. that. Isn't yes. it amazing? Yes. Like you don't want it to be any longer. It's just like, boom. And, you and know, it's a lot of information in a right? short amount of time. I right. Know. Right. So so you could say, hey, I'm following in Sam Shepard's footsteps. I'm following in Carol Churchill's footsteps. Um, those are good. That's good company. Um, okay. If you want to link, you can write a lot of short plays. Many people, you know, write a lot of short plays that are related. If your okay. producers are asking for like an, an evening of theater. Um but I, I I do think um, that just just if your characters have more to do, then by all means allow them to allow them the ability to do it. So it's like if you're watching a, a on TV, for example, if you're watching a, a thirty minute show and it's just thirty minutes and that's a nice episode, that's great. And then the next episode takes over from where the previous episode left off. Um, that might be what you're writing, you know, 
some 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 tea, and that's cool too. Uh, we have all these forms now that we can write in. So feel confident that if you feel good about the length, then then feel good about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Also, my name is pronounced Naisha, okay. and <laughs> my <laughs> second question. Um, this one's a little different and also tricky. When writing about black males, there's been this debate. They are often emasculated in in media, on stage, and screenplays. This is what I've been hearing. I'm not 100% certain. So I'm trying to understand if I'm going to write from that perspective, how can I tell a story without making them seem emasculated? Seem, that's a word that Hamlet likes to use. Um, what does he say? I am not seems, something like that. Anyway, what people perceive and what we write are often two totally different things. Mm. You know, so I'm thinking, okay, all of August Wilson's plays, I would I say there are a lot of black men in those plays. I ain't seen none of them emasculated. Uh, Thoughts of a Colored Man was on Broadway a couple of years ago. I didn't see those brothers didn't seem emasculated to the like to me. Top Dog Underdog, they weren't emasculated. I mean, they were all these men, the Othello, that's not an emasculated man. These men are seem very powerful and wanting things and everything that great characters should be. So I don't know what you're reading. Stop reading. <laughs> Stop reading. Those. Stop reading those those books and articles because I don't think that they don't they don't jive with any reality that I've seen. Um, I don't know what it, you know. And if you're going to write a character, just be true to what what does he want? How does he get it? What's he going for? You know, what does he love? What is he moving toward? What is he moving away from? All the things that any other character would need and want to be authentic on the page and on the and on the stage. And you you write a, a you know a black male character just like you'd write a black female character, just like you'd write a horse of a different color. I mean, a good character needs needs great things. You know? Does that does that make sense? It does. It does. It actually uh, solidified an argument that I presented uh, to other people who were telling me about um, that topic of emasculation. And I pointed out, I use the same reference, August Wilson's plays aren't like that. Um, In Troy, Fences? Yeah, I've, I've read all of his cycle plays. Um, I've read a lot of plays about those characters. But I just wondered if one one that I wrote, a lot of people told me the character was too strong and a lot, a lot to take in. Um, so I guess I guess in my mind I was looking for validation and maybe I received too it. Too strong, you know, too strong, too much, too, you know. I mean, and also people have the right to their opinions and and you know, we, we need to take in what helps. And, and leave the rest. And I will consider this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naisha. Thank you. Thank you, Naisha. And thank you for teaching me how to say your name. Um, um, we actually got a question in the HowlRound chat. Right on. Do you, do you ever feel blocked because you have too many ideas and don't know how to get them all out coherently? How do you navigate that bottleneck of thoughts? Yeah, that's a great question from the chat. Uh, <clears throat> um, I, I I feel it's it's very helpful to do one project at a time. You know, even if you're just you know you can make a list. I can't show you my my desk is is a is a pile of lists and inboxes and and different boxes for different projects because um, I work on different projects every day. Uh, you know, throughout the day. And so, but I, I really work on, I really practice working on one project at once. So right now, this is the project I'm working on. Watch me work. We're talking to you, you know? Um, I really work to focus. Um, and if you just say, okay, I've got 17 projects I want to work on. Today, for the next 20 minutes, I'm just going to work on project A. And you just focus on that project, you know, 
now, okay, now I'm going to work on project R. I'm just focusing on that project. Um, and after a while, maybe you'll prefer to work on project A most of the day or most of your, during most of your work time. Um, but just you know, train yourself to just work on one project at a time. Um, it's the same thing like when you're talking to someone, don't also be reading your phone. Just talk to them. Just talk to them. You see, you, you know what I mean? Um, it's kind of one that I have to practice too. Also, is that is that helpful? I hope I can't see your face while I'm talking with you, but. I would assume it was helpful. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think funny. you crushed it, SLT. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. But um, it, just the theme is do a, try to do a little bit. You know, blocked is when you don't want to do nothing. Try to do a little bit, a little bit. Try to do a little bit. Yeah. But uh, Crystal, please unmute yourself. Hey, Crystal. How Hi. you doing? I'm good. I'm good. well. How's your shoulder? You know, <laughs> it's, it's doing healing. It's, healing. it's healing. It's healing. Yeah, I can do this. Oh, um, <laughs> thanks for asking. Sure. Um, so um, I'm working on the play that I was telling you about. Um, yeah. uh, the two women where I'm trying to figure out the time, even though it does take place. The the beginning takes place at a sit-in, but I didn't want to do it in 1960. Uh -huh. um, so I'm I'm kind of uh, playing around with, um, I guess, I don't uh, maybe like his history in the sense that like I'm I'm put, I didn't want to put it in a specific place in a specific time because I feel like I wanted to kind of put it. It create my own world in which it's applicable, but not uh, not to the T of what has happened or would happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, I so, so. I, okay, like, you know, I, so I'm trying to do like, you know, his historical things, but not like, but not like, okay, this happened in 1960. So this story is going to take place in 1960. I actually want it to take place probably maybe in the fifties um, or the thirties, but I don't know. I, this was the issue I had last time when I, when I said, and you said, you know, write ignorantly and, and, and I, and I'm doing that. I'm totally doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't set like a, you know, I, I know what state I want it to be in, but I ha I haven't necessarily said like, oh, it'll be in this city. Um, and I haven't said, oh, it'll be in this year. I've just been taking events the way I dreamed this story. Um, it's just it's just like a, events that keep happening that cause the characters to either get closer or separate. Um, so that's actually not even my question. Um, <laughs> my question is, um, I'm writing out of order, uh, and it and it's it's still coming along. I'm still actually like, I don't know if I should be smiling when I'm writing, but I'm like, wow, this is really coming out. Mm -hmm. And um, but there's one scene that is especially violent. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a very uh, strong reaction to like writing it. I know I have to write it. Um, it's what kind of turns the play in a, um, it, it, it changes, it changes everything, that one event. But it's mm -hmm. like the one part that I'm like, I don't, I don't feel uh, brave enough to write it. I don't feel brave enough to write it um, because it's just um, I've already written another part that was violent and I was like, oh, boy, that's, you know, <laughs> again, I'm like, it's coming and flowing. But like that one part is just very um, hard to even approach. Mm -hmm. So I, I know I need to get it out. I need to do it. Um, do you have any thoughts on like mm -hmm. 
you know, and I don't want it to be gratuitous or like for the sake of right. you know, whatever it, it is necessary. Um, but it's just right. Right. So it, it, great, Crystal. And you, you, you've you been coming to this show for a long time. So I've been talking about your work for a long time and you always have really cool questions and you're always working on interesting stuff. Um, a couple of things. What, as we as we know, or we should know, every, uh, all most sex acts are not pornographic. And uh, you could, could people say trauma porn and say they say they don't want to see trauma, any trauma. They don't want to see any violence. They don't want. To, and I think violence porn is just violence that's violent acts in plays or that have to happen because they have to. That's where the story's going. But they're poorly constructed and poorly written mm -hmm. because we are still learning how to how to write them appropriately. I would say do everything you can on the front end to take care of your characters everything okay so you want to make sure that they are uh human and 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 hitting all the all the human beats if, if you know that that has to happen in your story and there's no way to tell the story without showing this unfortunate violent act do everything you can to take care of your characters show them as humans to the full extent of their humanity mm -hmm. okay so yeah. make sure you're doing that. So don't shortcut anything just to get to the part that's going to make people go, oh, oh no, oh my God, you know, like that. I mean, please, because that's porn, right? That's that's ding dong pizza blowjob, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I don't mean to offend anybody, but that's that's porn. And not that we don't like porn, so that's, I mean, a lot of people would watch that, but that's, that is the equivalent, with a violent act in there, that would be the equivalent of violence porn or trauma porn, right? Mm -hmm. You want to really, really, really develop your characters and ask yourself two questions. One, why won't you set it in a particular year? I I, I don't understand that. And um, two, what are you afraid of? What am I afraid of as far as the writing? Or I don't know. I don't know. There seems to be a... Yeah, I'm smelling. I'm intuitive. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, um, something that is causing you great you know, joy as you write it, but also concern. Why don't you set it in a particular year? Uh, it could happen in the thirties. It could happen in the fifties. It could happen in the, you know, I mean, what's up with that? I, I don't understand that quite. I, I don't understand it quite myself either. I, 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 I wanted to, I, I wanted to write something that was like this, this could happen, but I don't know how to explain it. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good answer. I don't have a good answer. It's just, I'm just, again, because you are showing a, a, a violent act in a historical context. And so again, take care of your characters, mm. you know? Yeah. You have to, for lack of better, earn it. That's horrible. But you need to really, they need to be human. They need to be authentic human, humans for that to really, uh, you know, for you to be able to write that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, does that go for the person who is doing the... Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. And that's the hard part about it. Yeah. Everybody has to be a human. <laughs> yeah yeah we can't only make the the victims the humans you know what i mean and the and the person doing the the, the crime whatever he they're ah you know no everybody has to be a human that's what i'm talking about and 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 they might draw some of their humanity from a particular historic context. If it's 1957, that's very different from 1964. I'm not saying write, write ignorantly. Just yeah, sure, get it out there. Okay. Um, um, but last week, your I mean, last time your question was more concerned with the the uh, voice, the 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 language, the vernacular used, and that's what I was referring to when I said write. Just don't worry about getting the vernacular correct. Oh, well, right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say, you know, the other points I, you know. Yeah. You're choose, right. a year. choose a year. Choose it. Choose a year. You've already chosen a city and a, and a, oh dear, it's 558. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm just looking at, I'm just going, oh, it's 558. 
<laughs> okay, but check in, check in next week. Let's let's check in again. Oh, for sure. All Thank right. you. Last question. I Batari, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey. Hi. Um, I like to say I'm a Smith College alum, so it's nice to see other Western Mass people here. Um, but my question is. Two years ago, I wrote this 10 minute play for this 24 hour festival and decided just to revisit it. And my theme, the theme was like Chekhov. So I wrote about Uncle Vanya and, and I shared this play with someone and I wrote about like, kind of had brought it up like Stanislavski was a character, kind of touched upon Uncle Vanya, but also not. Mm -hmm. And I realized I actually liked that draft and wanted to work on it but because someone said I can I totally see Stanislavski like this I I he this is how he would behave I'm like oh I wasn't trying to be so reality based and now I'm just like afraid that if I work on it and change things that it I don't know I feel like because it's like Stanislavski and Uncle Vanya you can't my mind's like you can't um make it to out there I guess you have to follow like reality I guess and I'm just like how do I get out of that space and just work on this um, fix this draft and make it what I want without having to stick to what I think yeah yeah, yeah. what they think or what somebody's thinking yeah so how do we yeah um do you it doesn't have to be Stanislavski kind of yes but also because why so it's like it's my first time using real people it just needed to be people who were in that first production of uncle vanya so it'd be just, someone we'd never met that's true maybe stanisovsky's like assistant oh you don't yeah. know you know you don't know you know they never heard of him he's right. like you know he was like carrying stanisovsky's coat yeah he didn't you know they wrote the history. They didn't mention him. He's kind of bitter. <laughs> I would be. Wouldn't you be? <laughs> yeah. This whole movement happened and they don't even mention his name. That's true. You know, there are there are so many ways to get around around these <laughs> around <laughs> these rules, people. <laughs> right? So right. so you know, you could, you know, try that. Yeah, okay. Let me just see what happens if I swap that character. Yeah, just make him the guy who wasn't, his name wasn't written down in the, you know, when they wrote the history of the thing. <laughs> he could even be like a POC. Shit. Right. I mean, whatever you want. That's the thing, you know, we're free. And we will continually remind each other what that means. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to put this thing in the chat again to remind you guys. I have a test kitchen and it's uh, meaning I'm going to be hanging around town playing music as I work on a new show. Uh, and so uh, if you want to get on the website, I mean, on the mailing list, join the bands called Sula and the Joyful Noise, which is a nickname that my dad gave me years ago. So Sula and the Joyful Noise, I have a brand new six piece band. We're having fun. I love hanging out with you guys. You guys, you all, you people. Um, yes. Thank you, uh, Public Theater. Thank you, Hal Round, for hosting us and embracing us and making this just a wonderful, wonderful experience every week. Will we be back next week, Zoe? Please tell yes. us. Yes. Zoe, see ya. Say yes, we'll see you. Mwah. Thank you yes. so much. See you okay. next week, everyone. Bye. Bye.